Hi friends, this is Caitlin. Welcome back to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be creating a really fun springy, summery floral card featuring the new Garden Builder and Rustic Garden die sets from Spellbinders. These are new and so much fun to use individually and they obviously go perfectly together. So we're going to have fun making a really cool like floral garden cut garden kind of scene I'll be adding in the just wanted to say sentiments and then I have some pattern paper and some plain green cardstock set to the side to kind of create a scene with uh, for this kind of rustic garden card we're going to be creating so I'm going to start out by taking out all of the dies that I want to use from each of these die sets and I'm going to be cutting them out of some alcohol marker friendly cardstock. I am going to be Copic coloring all of my die cuts. Obviously these would also be super easy to ink blend or you could cut them out of colored cardstock but I love the amount of detail that I can get from my Copic markers. I just think that it really lets me customize and control exactly where my shadows are and the details on some of these leaves and florals. Um, I just really like it. I'm using some of the Spellbinder tape to hold all of my dies in place so that I can run this through my die cutting machine without having to worry about them sliding around or bumping each other. And I just have this little clear bowl that I like to use when I'm doing die cutting involving any of these smaller pieces. That way I can keep everything in one spot until I'm ready to start coloring. So some of the florals I'm going to cut out a few times and now I'm also adding in this barrel. I did cut the wagon wheel but I ended up not using it. I will use that another time. Uh, I just felt like I had more than enough detail going on with the fence and that barrel. So I love that Spellbinders prints their images on this back piece so that way you can reline up all of your die cuts and know that everything is going to fit right back into place. It makes it so easy to clean up and keep everything nice and organized. Um, and I started pulling out all of my different pieces and I'm going to go in now and cut off the top third of my barrel. I decided instead of le letting this be a full like rain barrel or whatever, I wanted it to be a planter. So I am going to hold the top die layer up just so that I have a good idea of where to put those shadows and I am going to start coloring with my Copic markers the under layer first and then the over layer and we are going to make this a really fun kind of barrel planter for it kind of looks like a hosta I'm not really sure <laughs> I just had so much fun coloring up these plants I do have a garden but I am also pretty new at it so these kinds of flowers I just kind of went with what I thought would look pretty um, not necessarily trying to make them a duplicate of something you would actually find in a garden or front yard but if I could make my garden look like this it definitely would so I use a lot of the e30 markers everything will be listed in the description down below for you as well as over on the scrapbook pal blog um, there's a blog post that goes with this too and so the full supplies list is over there as well that has all of the Copic colors that I used but I did go in with the e30s I use the darker ones for the underside and the lighter e30s for this upper layer and then I'm going to glue those into place. I'm going to pretty much glue as I color and complete things just so that I can kind of mentally check them off of my list and start kind of generally getting an idea of where everything is going to go into my little scene I'm going to be creating on my card. So you can see I have that green card stuck up at the top kind of just resting on that kind of watercolor blue that's going to be our sky and then all of these elements are going to help us build this scene so for my fence I decided to go in with some warm gray markers I'm going in on all of the different panels now it doesn't matter if they're going to be the um, vertical kind of like stakes in the ground or the horizontal fence slats they're all getting colored the exact same so I'm going W5 on the outer corners blending that towards the center with a W3 and then just running the W1 all the way across everything to make sure that I get a really nice seamless blend and once all of those are set 
I will put all of those up to the side and we are going to get to work on some of our greenery, which this is by far my favorite part of these dies. The fence and the barrel and everything in that rustic garden set, I really do think help create a scene instead of just having really pretty flowers. I think it takes it to the next level for sure. But the florals just make my heart so happy. These are, this is the little bush hosta type situation that I was creating. So I am coloring the underside in some darker G markers. And then I'm going in with each of the individual leaves that are going to get added on top, giving them some veining and then shading them with some lighter YG markers just to give a really nice contrast and to really help those leaves pop. I am going to go back in with the G29 darkest shade to color in that center section that right now you can see a kind of Y shaped section in the middle of that plant. I'm going to shade that back in because I didn't want there to be any gaps within this barrel. If you are using it with the stem and keeping it more of like a freestanding plant, you can leave that center section out and there is a stem that goes kind of in the middle of this. All of that's kind of in the pictures on the front of the die set. I also love that Spellbinders gives you ideas of how to assemble these things on the front of the packaging, but I will tell you that I took some artistic license with some of the florals and how I chose to layer them. And I think that that's really fun too, that if you're kind of nervous the first time you're trying it, there's a lot of guidance in their packaging, but once you kind of get a hang of it, or if you're feeling super inspired, you can get really creative and kind of play with how all of this layers together. And I just love that so much. So I taped the center section back into that little bush and I'm going to go ahead and glue it right onto the barrel. I'm using the Lawn Fawn liquid glue for all of my gluing today just because that precision tip makes it so easy to use with these smaller little die cuts. And I'm going to go in with all of the same kind of G and YG markers for all of my greenery. I'm just going to kind of alternate whether I'm using the two darker colors, the two lighter colors, just kind of switching it up and keeping it fun, but all still within that same kind of color story so that I know everything will go. For the most part, I just went through and added a darker color to the center kind of stem of each of these branches and then went in with the lighter color to shade on the leaves. I also took these two longer stemmy pieces that are supposed to go with that hosta type plant and I shaded them and then cut them in half and we're going to use them as flower stems instead. And this tulip is so beautiful. I grabbed some R markers. I went in with R22 and R20 and I'm shading the back part darker with the R22, keeping that lighter section, or sorry, the center section lighter with the R20 and then layering those up and we'll set that aside. I also decided to create two other pink flowers. I did three flowers of each color combination that I went with. So we're going to do pink, yellow, blue, and purple. And the purples are going to get added onto our hosta because I don't know about you, but my hostas do actually get purple blooms, usually a little later in the summer. So uh, the, the purple ones, are, they're going to go on there. And the pinks and all the other flowers are going to kind of get put across in front of the fence onto all of those really cool little stems we just created by cutting apart that other section. So I'm just taking my time kind of layering my petals on one on top of the other and then adding in the center section to each. I love how these really pale yellow and kind of creamy, I think I went in with like an E30 marker too for some of them to change it up, but I just love how the center section kind of pops off of those brighter colors. For my yellow flowers, I did go for a very bright true yellow. So I went in with the Y19, Y15, and Y13 just to get some really bright pops. I wanted this to read a little more summer versus spring, but obviously with the tulip, you could definitely make this super springy and you could argue that my finished card definitely looks more spring than summer. I think it's good for honestly any time and I think that the sentiment I ended up using with it um, definitely helps to kind of push that any occasion 
uh, use for this card. Um, but I was hoping that adding in some of those brighter colors, the brighter yellow would really help to keep it a little fresher and more summery. So now I'm going in with my purple to create the flowers that are going to go on our hosta. I used some BV markers for that and I pulled out, um, that's the, the, sorry, that was the E30 that I used for that creamier, softer center. I thought the yellow might be too punchy. And then I'm pulling out some really pale blues that are still on the brighter side. They're not like a powdery blue. They're more in that kind of baby blue family. And I just love how, again, they pop against all of the green and how they coordinate in with the rest of the colors. So now we're going to start assembling our whole little scene. So I'm adding liquid glue to the back of my kind of grassy layer. And I just cut that straight across with a regular paper cutter. No special dies needed. Um, and I'm using a watercolor blue cardstock to just create that soft kind of cloudy background. And I love this kind of more rustic wood grain pattern paper as my card base. That's just going to help to tie in this kind of more rustic farm garden kind of feel. And my glue tube did get a little stuck. I had to go in with a pin to clean it out. So just know if it starts to do that, having one like a little sewing pin or something around will help keep that glue flowing nice and easily. I started by just holding one of my fence posts in place and then adhering each of the slats kind of across. You could see I was referencing back to the packaging to make sure that I was doing kind of along the lines of what they were suggesting. So I'm going to just one at a time layer each of those slats all the way across, get those all lined up, and then I will add the fence posts at the end once all of my fence pieces are in place, all my horizontal ones are in place anyway. So I'm going to go three slats down. You could do more, you could do less, whatever kind of fits your scene that you're creating. And I'm going to take the extra ones that I cut and we're going to kind of cut them a little, a little less than halfway and glue them into place. And this is just going to help create that feeling that our fence runs all the way across off of and out of the scene, which will really give that like you're just getting a snapshot of one little section of this farm or garden. And I just love that feeling. So once I had those all lined up, I added in that fence post. I repeated the same thing on the other side, just dotting a little bit of that liquid glue. Less is more with this kind of stuff. You don't want glue oozing out all over. And then adding in the fence post to the other side. Then we will pop up our barrel with the 3D foam squares. I love these. I love the dimension that you get with these. And so I just have three on the back of that. That'll just help kind of pop and give a little extra dimension. I'm adding in my purple flowers. I did all three of the purple flowers onto my hosta. And you can see I have my stems back there along the fence, but they're not glued down yet. That was just to help me try to get an idea of where everything might end up. So one more time, I'm going in with my liquid glue and I'm just dotting a little glue on each of those leaves and then placing my stems kind of one at a time, making sure that I'm tucking some behind that barrel and trying to get a good combination of angles where some of these are curved and some are more straight. And I really wanted to fill up the space and have it feel really full and lush, right? You want a really lush kind of summertime garden. So this was so much fun, just kind of piecing all of these little pieces together and creating this scene. Then I went in with those little smaller stem pieces to kind of fill in that section and that middle part of the fence. And once all of my green bits are in there, we will start layering in the florals. I also added one single longer stem and the leaves for the tulip. It was just so pretty. I don't I don't know if it makes it, like I said, read more spring, but it just is so pretty. I couldn't skip it. It had to go in here. So I'm going in now. You can see dotting that liquid glue across those smaller stems, and I'm just going to kind of sprinkle those florals all the way across, kind of mixing up some of the colors 
going back and forth with them. I'll also add one of the blues a little higher up on one of those bigger branches just to kind of change it up and make sure, like I said, that everything feels really dense and lush in this garden. And I just think it turned out so cute, all of these florals. But then I needed to come up with how I was going to add my sentiment. And so I ended up grabbing the label, uh, sentiment labels from Spellbinders. And I cut the bottom tag layer out of a metallic gold cardstock and stamped the um, just wanted to say sentiment that says you mean the world into the center section and I stamped it in with worn lipstick oxide ink to tie in that pink from those florals and I think it brings the whole card together. So I hope that you enjoy this. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you get to come back for even more crafty inspiration and make sure you check out all the links down in the description box for anything that you need. It's all down there. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me. I hope that you have the most amazing week and as always, happy crafting.